bad pickups, bad cyclists, convenient cops, inconvenient cops, a Tesla versus a tire, and a semi on fire. This episode of Wham Bam Dash Cam is bursting at the seams, so let's get into it. Gary was heading home from class when he noticed an SUV ahead of him slowing down to turn. He could tell the SUV would be out of the way before he got there, so he just kept going. Sadly, a different SUV got in the way instead. When the other SUV pulled out in front of Gary, he panicked and tried to swerve around it, but he couldn't avoid a collision. His Volkswagen Jetta spun completely around before landing in a ditch. After the impact, Gary sat in shock for a while before reaching for his phone and dialing 911. A passing police officer stopped to check on everyone while Gary was checking on the other driver. It turned out the cop was outside his jurisdiction, so he called a South Carolina Highway Patrol officer to assist. All told, Gary was on the side of the road for two hours before he was able to get home. The driver of the SUV was uninsured, and his license was suspended as a result of this collision. Sadly, Gary's Jetta was totaled. Christian was on his way to pick up his little sisters from school when he watched a pickup driver tap a white car while turning onto the road across traffic. It seems like the pickup driver didn't see the car when he pulled out and he ended up hitting the car's rear wheel and sending it spinning. Christian turned around to check on the car driver and give him his dash cam footage. Hopefully it helped him find the pickup driver because he just drove off without even stopping to see if the car driver was okay. Andrew was on his way to work in morning rush hour traffic and was waiting at a red light. As it turned green and traffic began moving, a pickup driver from the left ran his now red light right in front of a Boston police officer. It looks like the pickup driver spotted the cop car and knew he'd messed up, but the cops weren't going to let him get away with it. Andrew said this happens frequently at this intersection, so seeing someone get caught in the act was priceless. And the instant justice made my morning. Sometimes the cops are in the right place at the right time. Other times, people get in their way at the wrong time. Bob was driving when he noticed several police vehicles responding to an emergency. As they approached an intersection, the driver of a car panicked and hit the brakes right in front of the lead police vehicle. The police SUV slid to a stop but couldn't avoid tapping the rear bumper of the car. Bob didn't stop and I'm guessing he didn't feel the need to call 911 either. This submitter encountered a driver who we suspect was new to this whole driving thing. They spent several minutes inching forward even though the light was red and it wasn't going to turn green anytime soon. It's red! After our submitter gave them a friendly beep, they backed out of the intersection in time to make room for cross traffic. But that only set them up to make another mistake. They forgot to shift back into drive, and when the light turned green, they nearly backed into our submitter's Honda Civic. He honked at them again before they solved the problem and drove off. Jaden was going home after work, going about 58 miles per hour in a 45 mile per hour zone when another driver pulled out in front of his GMC Yukon. While swerving around the white car, Jaden narrowly avoided hitting a disabled vehicle that was sitting in the center turn lane. Thankfully, no contact was made. Dito was headed to Kroger for some fruit. As he turned through a gap in traffic, he was surprised when a driver coming down a turn-only lane crossed solid white lines to continue straight and run into Dito's Lexus. You can't really see it in the dash cam video, so here's a better view of the road markings the other driver ignored. Cops responded and cited the other driver, but Dito is still waiting for his insurance provider to get back to him. Felipe and Igor were driving in Colombia, not to be confused with Colombia, sorry guys, when the car in front of them kicked up an unidentified metal object which they proceeded to hit. 
The rear camera doesn't show the object being left behind, but they also told us they couldn't find it under the car. This leaves them with two equally disturbing theories. Either the object is still stuck somewhere under their car even though they searched for it for hours, or there's some sort of black hole or dimensional rift that the object fell through. Thankfully, they didn't find any damage. Jeffrey was driving with his wife in the car when he approached a green light. He told us that in France, as in many places, bicycles have to obey the same rules as automobiles. That didn't stop one cyclist from running a red light right in front of Jeffrey's Toyota Yaris. He slammed on the brakes and honked, and he told us the cyclist waved as if thanking Jeffrey for stopping to let him through. Ricky captured this week's Tesla behaving badly, and it looks like this time, the Tesla driver got taught a little lesson. When the Tesla driver merged into the side of Ricky's lifted Ram 2500, her door made contact with his tire, marking up the door but leaving no damage to Ricky's truck. That, that Tesla man can't drive. Both drivers stopped and checked for damage. Since Ricky's truck was fine, they both agreed to part ways without any further action, except for sending his dashcam footage to Wham Bam Dashcam, that is. Gio spotted a whole new level of rolling coal while driving his F-150 Lightning. He was driving cross-country from California to Georgia and had just left a charging station when he encountered a semi-truck on fire. The semi blew through a red light before speeding down a feeder road. Gio called 911 and told them what he'd witnessed, but they never called him back. Christian was on his way to work when he got caught in one of Colorado's spring snowstorms. As traffic approached a red light, the driver of a Jeep forgot to give himself enough stopping distance. It looks to me like the Jeep driver forgot that four-wheel drive doesn't give a vehicle better braking. Thankfully, they were able to slide into Christian's lane to avoid hitting the stopped snowplow, and everyone went on their way. Christian sent along a shout-out for the Colorado DOT for keeping the roads clear and safe to drive on. Danny loaned his Civic to a close friend whose own car was having some issues and needed to borrow it to get to work for a couple of days. When he called Danny one morning to tell him he'd accidentally hit a guardrail, Danny decided to check his dashcam footage to find out what had happened. What he discovered shocked him. His friend had been driving at night with the headlights off, drifting across lanes and eventually colliding with a guardrail just as he'd said. At one point, he was even driving around a cop car, but the officer either didn't notice or didn't care about his reckless driving. Danny told us he's just glad that his friend didn't kill himself or someone else. Fixing the damage to Danny's Civic cost 1,500 US dollars, but his friend paid for the repairs. Angel was driving on US Route 101 when he watched a speeding Prius driver get some instant justice from a motorcycle cop. We're not sure, but it looks like the speed limit here is 55 miles per hour, and Angel was already going over 70, so I'm guessing that Prius driver's ticket stung a little. Brendan was driving to class when he suddenly noticed the car next to him invading his lane. He had to react quickly to avoid a collision. Thankfully, there was room in the next lane for him to swerve as he slammed on the brakes. When he pulled up next to the other driver, he found it was an elderly man who seemed to have no idea what had happened. Brendan continued to class, thankful it was only a close call. Candon was driving to Arkansas to visit a friend when traffic ahead of him began braking hard. As he slowed down, he instinctively checked his rearview mirror only to see an SUV bearing down on him. An oncoming F-150 stopped Candon from using the other lane to escape a rear-end collision. The driver of the SUV didn't speak English, so they used a translation app to communicate. Thankfully, he did have insurance. His insurance provider decided Candon's 2011 Prius was totaled and paid him $5,000 for it. Maria spotted the cart demon. She was looking for parking in her Mitsubishi Outlander when she spotted three shopping carts go rogue. One of them struck a Nissan Maxima while the other two stopped. 
Maria asked us to shout out her son Alfredo. They're both big fans of the Wham Bam channels, and they hope one day they can start sending videos to Wham Bam Tesla Cam. Chris was driving along when the driver of a pickup turned across the road to reach a driveway, only to stop for a pedestrian on the sidewalk. Chris honked as he swerved around the pickup, leaving the driver to complete his poorly timed turn. Thankfully, his quick reaction saved him from a collision. This emitter was driving his Volkswagen Golf when he realized a van driver up ahead wasn't stopping for his stop sign. Even though our submitter floored the brake pedal, the two vehicles still collided. Thankfully, nobody was injured, and the van driver took responsibility and paid for the repairs, which cost about 250 US dollars. Sean was headed back to work after his lunch break when he spotted a camouflaged SUV following two more camouflaged vehicles with Michigan license plates. He couldn't figure out what they were, so he says the camouflage worked. Okay, car guys, you're always pointing out when we misidentify vehicles. Is there really a difference between a Camaro and a Mustang anyway? Here's your chance to prove your skill. Tell us in the comments what vehicles you think these were. We don't know, so we can't exactly reveal the answer in a future episode. Just have fun guessing, and we'll see you next week. Wham! Bam! We got a Patreon, man! Please support the show!